Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. Thank you to all of our recent subscribers. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And then hit the like button or donate it. Hit the unlike, whatever, no one cares. Uh, subscribe to it though, and then click the bell. Stay up to date with all the videos, yada, yada. You know the you know the shtick. I'm James, joining with me today is Andrew. Hello there. That's Andrew right there. He is very excited to be talking uh, with me today we got the spoilers logo i should get rid of that we're not talking there's no spoilers or anything we're talking about today unless unless andrew you've seen avatar part two we're going to talk a little bit about avatar part two right now the trailer the lot the 13 year old for 13 year wait is coming to an end this december possibly until it releases in theater i don't trust uh, that we're going to get it as much like the flash film you just don't know uh, but it's coming. James Cameron always said he wanted to do more. And the trailer debuted. You are a huge Avatar fan. I am the opposite end of that. I I, I have no desire to ever watch that movie again. Um, <laughs> but I did say, after I saw it, I said, you know, I would give the sequel a chance if if it spoke to me. Not literally. Uh, but here we are. You saw Doctor Strange Part 2, Multiverse of, of the Madison Madness. Uh, the trailer for Avatar was in front of that. You were anticipating. You heard all the, the talk, like, this trailer is beautiful. It's the greatest thing you're ever going to see. And you're sitting in the theater with 100 other people, and you watch it. And what were your thoughts? My thoughts were, oh, wow, cool. I'm seeing Navi on the screen. But it was just a very brief, very basic teaser that had really nothing to it except some nice new visuals. Like, it was really bare bones as far as trailers are concerned. I think this was just really a way more than anything else to tell people who aren't crazy like us and who people who don't keep up with this crap like we do, just to tell them, yeah, we're actually making a sequel to that thing that you forgot about from 2009. I think that's the only job this trailer had. And it did that job. Because other than that, it tells you nothing about story, really doesn't show a whole lot of characters. Uh, I hope I don't get called a racist for this, but I think one Navi looks a lot like any other, uh, especially when there's just quick flashes of them uh, and they all have their braids. So it's it doesn't even really give you a sense of what characters are doing what and where. It's just, hey, we're making a sequel. And I think that that is kind of what they needed because like you said, this was a decade, almost a decade and a half of a wait. If you conceive the child during Avatar 1, that child's about to go to high school. That's crazy. It's true. You know, so the, the what I was thinking is it was a teaser trailer, obviously, to get people excited for because it's but because Avatar is like a funny beast, right? It's the highest grossing <laughs> film of all time. I think it's top, I think domestic is whatever, but it's the highest grossing, whatever. And it's it's not a franchise like avengers or star mm -hmm. wars it's just it's avatar it did its own thing was able to succeed so it's it's kind of it's a funny thing when you consider what it is it's like they just need to tell you that it's coming because you know what it is even though it's only one film it would be like well they just made a sequel uh to to 12 rounds with uh <laughs> you know what i mean like, you're like like and and like they tease it on you like you're like you're excited for this right? and so it I, it's cool that they're doing that and they could treat it kind of like that. Um, and I think what it was, was a lot of people loved Avatar and I think people forget that they loved Avatar and it became the hip thing to like dislike it over the last decade. <laughs> it, it took me one viewing in a theater and, and only halfway through that viewing to realize how I felt. But you know, but the thing is people loved Avatar and that's why it made so much damn money, right? Because people went, they recommended it, they saw it again, they recommended it again. That's word of mouth. It's everything about it. People were obsessed with Avatar. And this was a great way to tell those fans that loved Avatar that aren't obsessed with it, but do enjoy it. Like, hey, another one's coming. And look, it looks like the one that you loved. And, and I think that was a smart move. And it's also, I think, I am curious, though, because like you said, the, the babies that were born 13 years ago, now teenagers, um, and then the 10-year-olds are now in their 20s. And I'm curious um, how that plays out like are the 13 year olds curious at all do they care because this is their parents movie like do they even care and then the 20 year olds this is their their star wars like this is i grew oh my god that was exciting so it's 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 and then there's me who just doesn't care so it's like mm -hmm. this weird like it's 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 fascinating because even star wars you know like i grew up with star wars 
And when this would have, you know, this is almost the exact same amount of time as as the prequels came out from Return of the Jedi. But there were three Star Warses for me to grow up with before we got the prequels. There's been one Avatar. Now that one Avatar is basically the length of all three Star Wars, but it's one movie. So it's different. It, it, the whole thing fascinates me. You're right, though. I never even thought of that, that there's nostalgia bank to be made here. There were 10-year-olds who were like, ooh, I want a Jake Sully action figure and a Miles Korch action figure, and I'm going to make them fight. And now those 10-year-olds are 23, yeah. and they're just like, oh, damn, Avatar. I'm going to go dig out my old action figures, just like James Rizile from Rebel Scum Podcast was doing when he dug out his old uh, Lando Calrissian or whatever he had. And now they're going to go watch Avatar 2, The Way of Water, and they're going to be stoked. The way of water. I can't. That title is something else. What is it with James Cameron and water? Like, I want to. Has anybody ever asked him? Like, in, in I can. Like, he, what is your deal with water, dude? Probably. Can he swim? I think it'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> he just. I can't. Well, you know, well, he did Titanic. He did The Abyss, Titanic, mm-hmm. and then he became obsessed with Titanic for like ten years, and then he did all the. But we got to talk a little like the box office now, like cause avatar made 200 gazillion billion trillion dollars. Highest grossing movie of all time. Is it possible for avatar two? Cause you know, typically, you know, you kind of expect the next one to do better or just as well, I suppose. And I mean, the star Wars prequels all kind of did around the same. Um, none of them matched the force awakens. Uh, and then there's Fast and the Furious, which just every movie, just except for the last one, just keeps making more and more money for whatever <laughs> freaking reason. But do you think it's possible that this Avatar movie could trump the box office of the first one? I think it can. Um, the first one was so, like, it's still so baffling to me that it made the money that it did with nothing to springboard off of. So the fact that this one has a springboard and it has nostalgia factor and it has the hype of like, it finally exists. I think it's a very easy bet that it'll uh, hit those numbers and maybe even surpass the first one. The first one did have the 3d aspect going for it. People probably forget, but 13 years ago, 3d movies were kind of just kind of becoming this thing again. It was the, you know, the comeback of 3d. I love 3d. And this movie they created cameras for the movie. It was a big deal. And really, the th- it was the best 3D we've got. I think the the third Transformers movie used the same cameras. And I think they actually had better 3D. <clears throat> we won't speak to the movie itself. But I think the 3D was just as good or better. And I always have a tar- I've only seen that Transformers movie once as well. Because they're both pretty equal playing field for me <laughs> but it had phenomenal 3d and people were obsessing over that 3d and they went to go see in 3d and the other thing 3d brings you andrew is a couple more bucks to your ticket so so your ticket stubs have to go up a little bit more and i, I remember when the dark knight came out i'm like they should just made this in 3d you would have uh, made a quarter quarter more than you did uh, so, but now 3D, I mean, I'm sure they're going to release it in 3D, but people aren't as in love with 3D anymore. They're not like, well, we got to go see this 3D movie. And I think, and I think that, I think movies have done a disservice to the 3D uh, uh, viewing because the 3D hasn't even been true 3D. They just kind of scanned it in 3D and it's kind of been mediocre. And most people are like, what's well, even 3D? Whereas Avatar it used the three dimensions for a lot more. It was the depth, the cinematography, it, it, it utilized that technology whereas in the 10 in a decade since it's kind of been like oh yeah yeah did you see wolverine's claws come at you for like 3.2 seconds jackass 3d phenomenal 3d as well um but i mean like so i don't know are we are people going to jump to go see it in 3d like they did before maybe the nostalgia people will if they saw the original in 3d and they really liked that 3d i can't remember if when I saw Avatar one, if it was in three D or not, it was. I, it was. I, it was only shown in three D. It was only showing through. Okay, because I was the type of person, and I still am, that would actively go to the two D thing just out of spite. Um, and I will do that if it's possible for Avatar to call. But he's away making it for. But he's making it for three D. You, uh, you don't get him. <laughs> yeah. No, not with these. That is too long to sit uncomfortably. No. With two what? pairs of glasses. No, they, they, they go over they go over comfortably. They have big ones. They go over. You're taking the baby ones. When I went to go <laughs> see Ninja Turtles 
two out of the shadows with Brock. He chose the baby ones. And I was like, no, you got to grab. And they fit over your glasses snug, like perfectly. You don't even know they're there. Ugh. Not the ones I've had. <laughs> no, thank you. Yes. <laughs> They make them to go over your glasses. I'm going to fight you on that one. <laughs> yeah, I will uh, I will go out of my way to find a 2D one. And if they don't, I have a special pair of 3D glasses that cancel out 3D, so I'll wear those. I can't believe you don't like 3D. It's so yeah. good. It's, it adds so much dimension to the film. When it's done properly. When it's done not done properly, it's it's just a, a gimmick. But when it's utilized, it's it, it adds so much more to the film, the, to the film viewing experience. It's such a great... I can't believe you don't like it. It's better than like the crappy CG we've been getting. It's so much better. <laughs> More people need to appreciate the third dimension on it. Uh, I don't already has Stephen Lang in it, so I'm like, you don't need to add any extra crap. I got Stephen Lang. I'm happy. I don't think this movie's gonna do what the first one did. I think I think it's gonna do very well. I do think it's gonna probably it's gonna reach a billion dollars if if people are entertained by it. Obviously, if they're not, it won't. But I think. I think it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be... I mean, James Cameron is great. He's a great storyteller. Um, but I do... I don't think it's going to match what the first one did. I don't think it can. I think the first one kind of hit you off guard. I mean, maybe that's why he waited 13 years to so catch you off guard with this one, too. But the first one kind of caught people off guard. They were surprised the 3D element to it as well. I just don't think... I don't think this one's going to do it. I think people... I mean, the trailer did extremely well on YouTube. The other thing we have to think about as well is... Do people want to even go see the movie to the movie theater in December? We don't know what the what the atmosphere is going to be like then. But people went out, you know, went out in groups to go see Doctor Strange, to go see Spider Man, to see Batman. So they are willing to go see it. Uh, and based on those trailer views, I would say people would want to go see Avatar. But the other thing too is I haven't seen the Doctor Strange sequel yet. I want to, but a part of me is like, yeah, but is it going to be on Disney Plus by July? Is it going to be on Disney Plus by July? I mean, everything's been spoiled for me anyway, so it's not like I have to go and beat the spoilers. It was spoiled to me before the movie came out because the internet's a disaster. But, like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, people might just be like, yeah, I can wait on that one. I can wait on that one. Well, I mean, that's nobody's fault but the studios, right? Because they are... They, they love their streaming releases so much that they're they're kind of jumping the gun and this is disney don't forget this is disney Mm -hmm. so i i don't i i would normally you know say to people like yeah go go to the theater support this the the movie support the the cinemas whatever but if the studios are cranking them into the uh the streaming platforms that fast then i can't help but say you know studios you're the one like if you're going to do it that fast, don't complain when people don't go see your movie and you don't make the box office numbers you wanted because it's your own damn fault at that point. So I totally understand. Uh, you you know you're you're still trying to be safe, and uh, you you're right. You have been spoiled on a lot of Doctor Strange because uh, Steve and I did not. Uh, we were flapping <laughs> our mouths off. Yes, your 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 spoiler talk wasn't even spoil. It was barely spoilery. I gotta get this out of the way for people who haven't seen it. You gotta go check it out. It's, it's a good conversation. That's not. It's actually very entertaining. But I was like, oh man, they're gonna spoil. They're gonna go into spoilers, and I was prepared not to listen. And I didn't listen for a little bit, but because I didn't want to get spoiled. But you guys weren't really spoiling it. You were more fanboying over it, like, and you were giggling yeah. like a bunch of like school kids. Yeah, I did this a lot. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And, and then it was like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, what is happening here? <laughs> Be professional. And then. And then the best part is halfway through it, Sam Raimi like leans in with a 20 and he gives it to Steve because Steve is in the same city as Sam Raimi. You are not. And so you got nothing. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that. I was going to say Steve likes 3D, but I don't know if that's true. And I don't want to put those words in his mouth. I love 3D, though. We're... Anyway, let's let's move on. The Batman 2, Andrew, has been, uh, well, I mean, it's been like almost a month now, but it's it's happened. We all knew it was coming. The Batman did very, very well. Um, and, and the sequel's coming, and everyone's talking about what to expect from the sequel, what do we want from the sequel, what should be in the sequel, what shouldn't be in the sequel, and we talked about this briefly a little while ago, and I said we might not talk about it today, but we're going to, and that's uh, someone, so a character that I believe fits into this Batman world. There's a few of them, but this is one the one that we're going to talk about today. That fits in the Batman world. We got, I think, a precursor to this character in the first Batman film, the only one, um, and that's Jason Todd. And, and, and 
it's easy. Everyone wants Robin in the bat, and I'm a huge Robin fan, and I do want Robin, but I don't know if we'll ever get a true Robin character in mm-hmm. a Batman movie until we have somebody that is willing to uh, step outside the box. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I love Matt Reeves and I love Snyder and I love, I mean, it's not a kind of Robin. And I love, I love Christopher Nolan. Like those are all great films, but they're all kind of afraid. Like Nolan kind of did his Robin and I liked it. And Snyder kind of hid his Robin. And, I liked it. And, and Reeves, I don't know, but I feel like they're all kind of afraid to do Robin. Even Michael, uh, Tim Burton, the Michael Keaton, a little afraid to do Robin. They almost did Robin and they didn't. And they're like, Oh yeah, there's a punk kid. So I don't think we're going to get him, but I think Jason Todd, even if he never becomes Robin, I think Jason Todd is a is a possibility, and I think it's a it could add a lot of dimension to the story as well. Um, I, I mean, if he doesn't become Robin, you could argue, well, what's the point? But, but we have all the elements in place, and and part of what has to happen in this movie now is something's got to affect the Batman in a way, right? It can't just be whoever the villain is running around there has to be something a little bit more that touches home and in the first movie we have the aftermath of obviously his parents death and trying to figure out that history the that lineage and all of that and now we've gone past that and for me this is how i'm feeling andrew is that with jason todd that get, that opens the door to you to have more tragedy in bruce wayne's life and we saw in the first time and he kind of helped he kind of like lets that one street mug kid go and that's kind of a, that's kind of Jason Todd that characteristic is kind of a Jason Todd characteristic, you know, like precursing his Robin days. We have a street kid, so I'm thinking, what are your thoughts on Jason Todd coming in? Uh, would you be for it? And do you want to see Barry Keoghan's Joker brutally murder him? First of all, Matt Reeves, please just call the movie The Batman Two, please. I think it's going to be that. I miss numbers so much, man. Like, what happened? What happened to us as a society where we're well, embarrassed about numbers? Film trivia for you. There they were never really numbers. For sequels, were never really numbers. They were just like a whole new name for the movie. And The Godfather Part 2, Coppola had, to, I believe, fought for the Part 2 and not to be a different title of the movie. And uh, so, really, it's only been 50 50 years where we've had numbers in the t- I kind of like when they're not uh, when they're not numbered though I kind of like when they're a little creative I think Batman's going to be Batman too but that's just some trivia for you Andrew I like when they're creative with a number Friday the 13th part 8 Jason takes Manhattan best sequel title ever like I don't know why that's not the gold standard anyway Jason Todd um, you know what I will I'm on board for Jason Todd but I'm going to put an asterisk next to that sentence. Uh, Cause you're right, man. Like the tragedy of Jason can really throw a, a cool twist into this dark story that Reeves was telling. Um, I just want them to, I want them to go the route of Jason Todd is there. He gets murdered. And then that's it. I don't want any red hood revenge crap. Cause honestly, I find the Red Hood kind of the most boring member of the Bat family. You know, everybody's this cool vigilante, you know, whatever. And he's like, hi, I have guns. Um, and he's he's just bland. Like, he just feels like a nameless thug to me who just happens to wear red. Like, uh, And I really didn't like the idea of like, no, we saw him beaten to a pulp with a crowbar, but no, nah, he's alive. Uh, I just hate that. I hate when death is just canceled. So bring him in. Kill him and end his story there. I think I don't think he would come back in the Reeves. You know, I, I just think if someone dies in the Reeves verse, I think they're going to be dead unless there's more than just him coming back as another vigilante. I don't think that's the point, but I think his death works. I think his death at the hand of the Joker will be. It could be even more traumatic, traumatic for the Batman because. We know that the Batman and Joker have a history together, right? In in that movie that we saw, right? They have a history together. I guess we don't know that because it's a deleted scene. But he's in Arkham, so we can. I think you would still assume that they have a connection there, anyway. Yeah. And the, so what what would happen is the events of the first movie that Batman kind of led to those events occurring, right? Like he's kind of the reason those events came because he was vengeance and the Riddler was like, we're the same thing, you and I. Like it's, it's his fault that those events happened. And because of that, that would allow Arkham to kind of go up in flames and allow Joker to remove. So so Jason Todd's death would 
almost you could almost view that as being his fault because everything that happens now is has led to Jason Todd, you know, him looking at Jason Todd, which leads to the Joker killing him, and the Joker, everything to do with the Joker is basically the Batman's fault at that point after after Arkham, and I think that could that could really work for. The character Batman, Bruce Wayne, obviously, and for the movie itself, because these movies, you know, it used to be like, what villain's going to show up? <laughs> but now, like with Matt Reeves, it feels like every villain is serving a purpose, and he's not just going to throw Scarecrow in it because, you know, someone on Twitter is like, I really want to see Scarecrow. It's like, well, why is Scarecrow going to be in it? Here's why. But it's not just because of the way he's going to affect Batman. It's going to be how does he affect Gotham? Does he affect everything around him? And I think that's the one thing that Jason Todd can bring to it with the Joker's kid. And I'm not, and, and, and I've said this before. It's like the Joker, I don't think should ever be your main antagonist in this series uh, because the series is bigger than that. It might be court of owls. It might be whatever, but the Joker's a part of the world. The Riddler's a part of the world. Catwoman, Penguin, they're all a part of it. And so how do they play with each other going forward? And, you know, Catwoman or Penguin might not even be in the Batman too. They might not serve a purpose to it, but I think the Joker in a small scale could be very valuable in that movie, in the story, in the, in the character development of, of Batman Bruce Wayne with Jason Todd in play. If you don't, I mean, like, cause there's always like, you don't need the Joker. You don't. And I don't, but I think you utilize the Joker to the Joker's strengths and the Joker's strength is crazy clown who kills Jason Todd. Right. And you're right. It's not. Uh, it's we don't live in that world anymore, thankfully, where superhero movies are just about the novelty of how is this villain gonna look on screen? Hey, uh, now it's more about the storytelling. And because of this, we can kind of rest easily knowing that Matt Reeves isn't gonna do it. You said and just throw in Scarecrow because somebody on Twitter really wants to see Scarecrow in his universe. Uh, he's gonna find reasons to put these people in. How they're gonna affect the world. How they're gonna affect Batman. How Batman's going to affect them. Uh, we saw that symmetry so beautifully with the Riddler that it would be weird for him to just kind of toss that beautiful writing out the window for a sequel and just be like, oh, whatever, man, that. So uh, I, I'm, I feel like we're in good hands, even though I'm done with Joker. Like I, I feel good with him being used in this world because I know it's going to mean something. I think the Joker thing, I like because a lot of people like they're sick of the Joker. I know a lot of people say they're sick of the Joker, but everybody will go see the Joker. I think that the thing is though, it's like we've had a Joker in '89, then we had Heath Ledger, and then we had Joaquin Phoenix, and we had obviously Jared Leto. And Jared Leto kind of had like the origin thing going on, and we Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger didn't have an origin, but it was still like the beginnings of the Joker, and so was Joaquin Phoenix, right? And they're very heavily about who this character is. Even the Dark Knight, where they don't tell you who he is, you, it's all about who he, he is and isn't, right? It's like he has his Rashomon way of doing things. And and I think people are kind of maybe tired of that aspect of him. But if you throw him in in a rogues gallery, and it's not just about him, it's about the greater villains of of, of Gotham, he can work because he exists in there and he's crazy. And he's a, because he's a lunatic, he can get away with things and he can drive because of – like the Dark Knight used him so beautifully – and that he drove the plot, right? It's like chaos, right? And 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 you can use that, but you use it small and subtly in the background of your overarching story, which it's kind of like the, the Riddler clues in the Arkham games. It's a side story. It's like the mm -hmm. side story. To, it's like I have to get here, but the Joker's messing things up there. And, and I just think to, to make it not so cheesy, you make it a big event that's really going to traumatize Batman and something else for him to overcome to whatever his the whatever the end game for the Batman character is in this in this Reeves verse, it's I think he has to come to grips with the death of someone close and I and it was almost Alfred, and I'm hoping it's never Alfred because that's not a character that should like every time even in this bat even in this Batman I thought Alfred was the weak link of this I thought um, what's um, Andy Serkis was great and all, but I think the, the character was the weak link of this movie in a lot of ways. Like, I still feel like, even when I watch it again, I'm like, he still needs a scene at the end. Just, like, one more scene, one more. Instead of them riding their bikes for an hour, just, like, cut to him. <laughs> or something like that. But, like, it... it I, 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 You know, he almost died, so I think you just need... You need to go that extra step. And it's not going to be him. It's going to be... You can, you can get away with it with Jason Todd. Yeah, exactly. See what happens to this Batman when he loses somebody close to him. Yeah. 
All right, so uh, Matt Reeves, start killing uh, Jason Todd. We got. To- yeah, man, what are you waiting for? Do it! All right, let's move on to our final topic of the day. Uh, you and I are both uh, Scream fans. You, you. It's funny because you like Scream Five, but it's your least favorite of the five. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was a little disappointed in Scream Five for a variety of, well, really just one reason. I just felt. I felt Scream as a franchise, and I think Fork was falling into this as well. But I thought I think Scream as a franchise is about characters who know who are. It's almost self aware, right? Where they're like, "We're in a horror movie," without it being a parody. Like we're in satire. Like we're in a horror movie. What do they do in a horror movie? You know, they run they run up the stairs instead of the front door. But to get Sydney to do that, right? They make it. They make a reason for her not to be able to go at the front door and have to go up the stairs. So it was a movie that was that was smarter than the source material. Whereas I felt they kind of fell into the traps of what actually horror movies are, where I felt like a lot of the deaths were forced and the decisions that were being made. I was like, I was, I was not like, I mean, we make fun of the inhaler thing all the time. Like that's to me, that's if the sister's not the spoilers for screams, if the, if the kid, if the sister's not the killer, then that's stupid. Like, that's just how, like, because there's no reason to go to that house that happens to be Stu's house. Like, the, the whole thing was just, it was contrived, right? And that was what threw me, what took, it was fun. It was very fun. And, and Andrew, you know, there's that scene at the beginning of the movie after the death when all the kids are hanging out at the high school. And I was just like, this is Scream. Like, I, like at that point, I'm like, they've nailed it. And then they slowly, I think, lost away. And I thought bringing Dewey in, like Dewey, I thought was done very well. I thought he was yeah. done better. I thought he was better done better than Han Solo and better than uh, Ray Stance and Ghostbusters. I actually thought the way they brought him in, that is, right? What happened to his character was something for me that felt a little forced and contrived. Also, I, I'm fine with it happening. And I, I you have to. But, but anyway, this is... We're, I'm just excited. Like, I'm very passionate about the screen. But I'm not going to go online and rip it because, you know... You like what you like. I really don't care. And also, you have better things to do with your time. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't. But, but the thing is, I love, I love, but Screams also, I, we're getting a sixth one. I didn't, I wasn't crazy with the fifth one. It's the same with Jurassic Park. Like the last Jurassic Park movie was god awful. But I'm going to go see the next it. one. <laughs> the Fallen Order? I love Fallen. Oh my God. It's so bad. That's another one. It's like, anyway, we'll get into that another day. It's terrible. But anyway, I, I'm excited for Scream 6 as Andrew freezes on the screen right now. Universal. There we go. See, they heard you talk bad about Jurassic World. <laughs> no, it's uh, the, the second one was. I saw it. Um, I saw it in the theater. Uh, and, uh, anyway, uh, but but anyway, so Scream Six is very exciting, and and now reports are starting to come out. We knew that like we knew that Nev Campbell was coming back, and Courtney Cox were coming back, and you're very adamant on Courtney Cox being the killer in this one. <laughs> if she's not the killer, you might actually burn the theater to the ground or something. I'm not quite sure. But it's getting exciting now. All the survivors from the from Scream Five are going to be in it. Which I have to say one thing: even though I thought the twin, the brother twin, his fake out death scene was terribly done because you know it was just too unreal. It was what Scream wouldn't do is what is what it is, right? It's what the Urban Legend movie would do, but not what Scream would do. But I'm glad he's coming back. I'm glad all of those survivors are coming back. And because what Scream Four I thought failed that was killing everybody off. Like it was like <laughs> yeah, there's a new- lot of deaths. In yeah, which is fine, but it's like, but I want to follow new characters, and you just wipe them all out. And then there was, you know, Wes Craven was like, "Well, we didn't really wipe them all out. Kirby might be alive." And now it's turning out that Kirby is returning in Scream Six, which is very exciting. I like it when they bring this in. It feels like Fast and Furious when they're like, "Oh yeah, now Tyrese is back and Ludacris is back. like." It feels like they're getting the gang back together. And the one thing, even though I wasn't crazy about that last movie, I I love the passion and the excitement that the filmmakers have for the franchise. Um, so for me, with this, let's just talk a little bit about the cast, Andrew. The cast coming back. Uh, any positives and any negatives to what you're hearing right now? Well, I love the twins, so I'm glad the twins are back. They were a joy to watch. Um, the two sisters, the main sister didn't really do it for me. I found her kind of boring. Um, but the sister from the beginning who, uh, keeps leaving her inhalers in random places. She's awesome. So I'm glad she's back. Hayden Panettiere though. All right. Hayden Panettiere, beautiful lady. One of my, my crushes, uh, back in college when I discovered her in Heroes and I was like, wow. Um, I, I met her. I have a picture with her. In fact, um, the thing about Hayden Panettiere coming back as Kirby 
is I really hope she comes back in, you know, the, the way that Randy quote unquote came back in Scream 3. Because it's just otherwise it's just like again, don't undo death, please. Is it but isn't that but 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 after the movie came out, Wes Craven said that she's probably not dead. And then doesn't Scream 5 kind of reference that she survived? I think they talk five, about her in Scream 5. Yeah, I can't remember I think, what they say. I think they allude to the fact that she's alive. I think they allude to the fact that she's alive. I have to rewatch it. Um, because there yeah, because one thing I liked about the movie was how it knew like it. There, okay, it was kind of prone. I knew the Scream lore, like I knew what happened around it. I still feel like a lot of the decisions they made were based off Scream Two and not Scream One, and they got their movies mixed up at times. Mm-hmm. But but I'm not even joking about that. But I think like like they, I, I'm pretty sure they acknowledge that she survived. Like a very subtle hint that she might be alive. How about that? I think I have to rewatch it. Now you're gonna make me rewatch. Goodbye. Yeah, you might be right because they they did name drop her. Um, that's the thing. That's one thing that I wish if Screen could just stop doing one thing. I get that they're fun movies and you're not supposed to take them too seriously, but if your script does not plan for a character to die, stop stabbing them and shooting them in the heart. Just stop yeah, doing that. Stop well, it. That, <laughs> that that started with Dewey was supposed to die. Yeah. And then, then the the test screening. Everybody loved Dewey, so that's why they, that's why they added the thumbs up. Which I love that nod to Dewey at the end of the movie when the twins give the thumbs up at the end. I love like there's little subtleties that I love in the movie, but I just I hope I for, for I don't know for for my 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 well being. I hope that they take themselves out of the trope of the horror movie and they make a '90s teen drama set in the world of a horror movie. Like that's what Scream is. It's like it's Dawson's Creek, which they watch in the movie, same creator, mm-hmm. in a horror movie. And they're like, oh my God, this is a horror movie. I know how to navigate this storm. So I'm not gonna and then, you know, yeah, you get the Rose McGowan that you like little elements like that. But it, even that one felt less forced at the time too, because it's also the first one. By the time we got to this one, it's like I'm just I don't know. There's some deaths that I like. I'm like, but the way you got there, I'm like, just focus on that. And I'm really excited. I'm excited that they're leaving Woodsboro again. I think the film franchise thrives in Scream Two when they leave. I'm hoping they go to the same college. But I'm glad they're leaving yeah. and they're trying to start a new life. And I, I hope they, I like, I really enjoyed the new characters, Andrew. But I didn't think they got enough to do. Like the twins were great, but they disappear for half the movie. Right? It's like yeah, same and, with Inhaler Girl. <laughs> they all yeah, serious. I, I but I think the biggest plague on the screen franchise at this point in time is the internet, and they're afraid of the ending getting leaked because it always has to be like who's the killer, right? That's such a big thing, and that is a big aspect of Scream. And it started in Scream Two. It was ruined in Scream Two, so they had to rework it. Which I think they ended up going better on the, what they did with Scream 2. I think they made the right choice on that. I think it worked to their advantage. Scream 3 was a disaster because of Columbine, uh, tragically, more than anything. Uh, and then 4, I don't know what happened there. And then um, 5, I think they had like 7 different endings. And it's like, did they did they know which one they were going to stick with? Or do they just like, here's our 7 endings? Because the problem with having 7 endings, I find, is you don't have a direction you're going in because you're like well it's going to be something like this but and i think that kind of played it because at points you're like well it's definitely the best friend right like, you're like it's definitely the best friend but then you're like well that couldn't really be the best friend because he's seven feet tall and she's not yeah and, you know and and for, for for me i thought the i, I really like the uh the actor who i didn't know was a quaid but he's a quaid yeah the, he was great i thought he was great and at one point i'm like oh he's the killer and then i went on i'm like he better not be because i want him to come back and then he was the killer and i was like son of a Son of a gun, um, but I mean that's the good point. Like Stu was great, and you're glad he's the killer because it works out. To you know, that's how you want it to go. Eh, I love Scream. I just want more. I want them to double down in the six because it's coming so soon, sooner than I thought we would get it. So I hope that they double down on the meta stuff. I want to see a lot more of Stab because I love Stab so much. Um, and I, I want them to use that. That's why I feel like Gale is the best choice that I can think of for a killer because you can use that idea for a motive of like, 
you know, we, we were here first, we were these originals and you just keep trying to replace us and carry us on and you kill the man I love to do that to further your agenda, like, it, you know, it's it's that idea of, yeah. like, how dare you replace Harrison Ford with Shia LaBeouf? There's only one Indiana Jones. Like, she's got that kind of mentality going on. Yeah, yeah, no, I like that. I just think you, you hold off on that until, if this is a tr new trilogy, you hold off until the end. Okay, yeah, if this is a new trilogy, sure. Yeah, like, that's not your middle chapter. I think that you, so whenever you're ending Scream, quote-unquote ending Scream, that's when you pull that trigger, I think. And no more her getting shot in the in the side. Like yeah, no that's more. It. Just that's it. Because that's also a Scream Two reference. I don't think you knew that. Scream Two reference. <laughs> there's so many, there's something happening, and I was and they're like, it's in, uh, but anyway, um, yeah, stabs great. I hope Tori Ooh, Spelling shows up in some capacity as well. I, <laughs> by the way, I love that. Uh, like. I watched it with my wife Erin and she was really annoyed because I got all the trivia at the beginning right on all the stab trivia and she's like what the hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm like it was the best I was like Heather Graham she's like what are you talking about I'm like it's the beginning of the stab it's when Jada Pinkett and Omar, they're gonna die they're gonna die in the... it's great Scream 2 is the greatest movie of all time let's be honest. it's like top five greatest movies of all time the best it, for me is the fact that it's opening night of a new franchise, and already there's people with masks and knives. <laughs> it's not a sequel. Avatar. It's Avatar. Not a, yeah, exactly. It was. The, Avatar. It, it knew what was going on. It was the Avatar before Avatar. I know. Uh, I could. You know what though? If there was hype for, I could. I don't know. If 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 the Batman was marketed with Onion Head, Drop Face, that that guy mm. with the mask, I would totally go to the theater with that mask on. Uh, all the time. I know it's. It, it's a little ridiculous, but it's such a great movie, though. I don't even care. Ran, like, Randy's death. People are like, I wish Randy didn't die. I'm like, no. He was my favorite character. And when I watched it, I was like, shh. But it's also like, that was, that's what makes these movies great, is mm -hmm. that character can die, right? And because that character can die, Dewey can die. And because Dewey can die, Gail can die. And I don't think Sydney can die. I think she might eventually. I think her, them making her a mom kind of, like I said before, like, takes away from her being able to get killed off. Like you don't really want to see kids growing up without their mom. That's really disgusting. So like, <laughs> but you know, as someone commented before, like, I don't think she should. She's the main character. I'm like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And also, you know, if you're not rooting for her, who are you rooting for? I guess ultimately. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, like you said, the new Sydney, uh, I, I, do you think Billy Loomis is going to come back? Um, Maybe not as in as big a capacity, maybe in like one little scene, like uh, like Norman Osborn talking to Harry for like mm -hmm. a second. But I think <laughs> she's kind of embraced that side of her now. So we don't yeah. need him as much. Did that work for you? It did not work. It caught me by surprise. I was like, oh my God, it's Skeet. Um, yeah, that's what I... a cool reveal. Yeah, but it didn't... I, that's the thing. I, like, I was like, oh cool, I got him back for nothing. Like it was weird. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That... Like, yeah, it just, again, I think this movie works better if the sister's the killer. I really do, because she could find out that she's a loom. Like, you know, like, there's so many things, because the way the killers are like, are, their motives sucked, I thought. Like, their motives were subpar. I can't even remember their motives. Like, that's how. It's, exactly. It, like, you know. they they weren't great. They, I think it was like, we found out you were a loomers, and we went on a chat group. I'm like, again, Scream mm. 2. Um, yeah, it was okay, but uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I don't know. I think Gail being the killer makes sense eventually. Maybe Dewey comes back as a killer. Mm -hmm. I, when Dewey died, I swore so I didn't actually see his death because I was like, because once he's like, I gotta get out of the elevator, I was like, F off, and I think I, I walked away and I got a drink or popcorn. <laughs> like, I was just like, I can't, this is stupid. Like, cause I, it just, it's like of all the characters, he should have, when you're going to kill him, he should have died before they got into the elevator. He shouldn't have made it to the elevator. That should have been the, it should have been like, gotta make sure he's dead. I'm like, well, yes, right. but, but, but. Yeah. Cause that yeah. moment telegraphs that moment of yeah. go on without me is too, too much of a telegraph. Exactly. And as soon as I, you're like, now if he would have survived and died later, then you can get with it. But I, I just felt he, he deserved, like Randy's death is perfect. It's like the most mm -hmm. perfect death, right? I mean, it's it's weird. It doesn't make sense that the killer would be in that van, but it's perfect. It's just it's perfect on every level. Uh, I don't know how this turned into me. I'm just 
exercising my demons of Scream Five. I was expe- <laughs> everyone said how great it was. I think I was expecting it to be something, and it it uh, it fell a little bit short for me on the Scream scale. I might have liked it better than Four. I haven't seen Four in a little while. Um, Did you actually scream at any point in the movie? No, I did yell though multiple. Times. I told you, okay. I, I yeah. did yell. I I swore multiple times. So in a way, they did their job right. Yeah, they did. You're right. You're right. We're gonna get so much hate on this and all the thumbs down from people. But I like Screen Five. You can like Screen Five. I'm not. I like I Screen ne- Five too, man. We're all in the same. I'm, ne- here. I'm never gonna argue with someone who likes something. I don't care. I'm just saying. I'm hoping in the next one, it looks like they've they've got a cool plan in place to bring him back Kirby, which is fun. And I hope. I, I just hope that they realize that they don't have to force the deaths. You just get to the deaths and let us have a good time. Yeah, maybe this will be the beginning of a Panettiere essence. She'll be coming back. She'll be in everything. She's going to be a Jedi. She's going to be a Marvel. Maybe she'll be a Wonder Woman. Bring Hayden Panettiere everywhere. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Andrew, show us your book. My book is called Side Scroller. This is it right here. Uh, James knows who the killer is in this. Spoilers, it's It's not Billy Loomis or anybody related to Billy Loomis. But uh, if you want to know, all you got to do is pick up a copy on Amazon right now. And there's an ebook too, if you prefer those. Get one for everybody you know. And he has a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Andrew Fantasia. I'm James. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own multiverse. What's your favorite multiverse?